In this film we're going to look at chain lubrication. Um, there are many different opinions on chain lubrication. There are many different products to lubricate your chain. They basically break down into three types. There's a wet lubricant which is a traditional oil. There are dry lubricants which are used very very sparingly um, and there are wax lubricants. So the pros and cons of each. The traditional wet lubricants are sticky, so they attract dirt, but they are the best lubricants, so they will have the best lubricating action on your chain, but it, it, the stickiness means that dirt will be attracted and the chain has to be cleaned regularly. Um, the dry lubricants that you might be aware of, they're only any good for dry weather use. So in Britain, um, they're not really that much use. The um, Dry lubricants are uh, compromised in wet weather and you can only apply a dry lubricant to a perfectly degreased chain. So if there is a, a spell of dry weather, you have to remove the chain, thoroughly degrease it, refit it to the bike, then you can apply the dry lube. Um, as soon as it rains, you really need to be going back to a wet lubricant. The third type of lubricant is a, a wax-based lubricant. Personally, I don't like them because they can leave uh, a residue which resists degreaser. So it can be very, very difficult to ch clean chains and cassettes where wax lubricants have been used. And um, if they've been used long term with little maintenance, you actually have to physically scrape the residue from um, the chain and cassette. So it's, it's very difficult to remove. So although Wax lubricants, like dry lubricants, run clean. They don't attract so much dirt. They don't lubricate as well, and they can use, um, result in this uh, build-up being left, which is difficult to deal with. So, in my opinion, uh, wet lubes are the best with regular removal and cleaning of the chain. And um, we've covered chain cleaning in a, in a separate video, so you might want to have a look at that. For now we're going to lubricate this chain. This chain has been removed and thoroughly degreased, so there's no lubricant in, in the chain at all. We now need to add some. We want to run right round the chain once uh, with an application of lubricant, so we need a start and finish point, and for that we'll use the joining link. So most chains will have a joining link fitted, or at least um, a factory fitted pin that looks different to the others which you'll be able to see when the chain is clean. Um, so we start with the joining link. We'll take some wet lubricant. This is a finish line wet lube. It has a dripper in the, uh, the top of the container there. And what we need to do is just add a minimal amount, just so there's one drip on the top of each roller. We go all the way around the chain until we get back to the joining link. There we are. So every pivot in the chain now has lubricant. The lubricant is, was applied to the top of the rollers. It will seep down under the roller and then through the bush to the pin. So the, the chain is then completely lubricated and it's internally where the lubrication is very important. Slopping lube all over the outside of the chain is just self-defeating. Um, it will attract dirt, you'll end up in a horrible sticky mess. We need a minimal amount and we need that lubricant to get down inside the chain. So, so that it gets down inside and settles in, we just run through like that. And then we need to remove any excess. So we take a lint-free rag, old t-shirt, wrap it around the chain and just run it through. And the action of doing this will wipe the sur surface of the chain with lube so that it has um, some protection from rust. So there we are, it's as simple as that. We now have lubricant inside the chain uh, and a, a very thin coating on the outside, so that's a properly lubed chain. 